Today, I'm going to talk about tackling COVID-19 uh, with the protein folding video game Fold It. And I used to have to explain what proteins uh, were and why they were important. Uh, but now I can really just point to the CDC uh, figure of COVID-19 because clearly we need to know exactly what this coronavirus structure looks like if we're going to be able to fight it. So this is where the Fold It Citizen Science Project comes in. Fold It is a free multiplayer online video game where players compete to fold proteins and get the best score. Folded players can also form teams and they can share solutions with one another um, as well as their um, different strategies that they come up with. Um, but you don't just jump in and start uh, fighting COVID right away. The first thing you encounter is a series of tutorial levels, such as this one for protein design, where you can design completely new proteins that don't exist in nature. Now, you can imagine that this is not an easy thing to do. In fact, Foldit turned, uh, turned 13 uh, years, uh, years old this year, but we struggled with protein design uh, until breakthrough in 2019. Finally, our players were able to create brand new proteins that don't exist in nature, and more importantly, we were able to solve those structures, and they looked almost identical to the player predictions. These are four uh, different proteins that the players designed, and these are the superpositions to the solved structures. You can see they're very, very close. So our latest challenge for the past 17 months has been to utilize these folded player skills to design new proteins to fight COVID-19. So last year, we launched two challenges in Folded, trying different strategies to combat COVID-19. The first effort is to design an antiviral protein. So we all know this image from the CDC by heart with all the coronavirus spike proteins in red. And so the idea is to design a new protein that'll bind to that spike protein, which is exactly what we're trying to do in Folded. We provide players with the model of the actual spike protein in the game, which they obviously can't change since we can't modify that one in any way. Um, and then we let players design proteins to bind to it. So the spike protein is fixed, but the players are able to mutate their designs to any protein sequence that they want, any length that they want, whatever binds to the spike protein in the best way possible. Our second strategy against COVID-19 is to design an anti-inflammatory. We heard the term cytokine storm a lot last year, which is what happen when, happens when the immune system releases more and more cytokines to defend itself. These are shown here as uh, white dots, but this instead causes the immune system to go into overdrive and it starts attacking human organs. So the approach we've taken with Foldit is to try to block these cytokine signals and this overstimulation of the immune system. And so from a Foldit point of view, this is a similar problem. We just need to design these little green dots in order to block the white cytokines. So what makes this problem difficult? Well, for obvious reasons, these designs need to have lots of small interactions with the target, which in this case is the spike protein. But in addition to that, the designs have to fold up by themselves before they can go and block the virus. So this is really hard because you're basically trying to optimize for two different things at the same time. Lots of interactions, but then a stable protein that folds on its own. So we're still plugging away with these coronavirus puzzles um, so that we can be ready for the next virus. If you're interested in updates, we post a video at the start of every month at the link uh, above. And in fact, this Sunday, we'll be releasing a very exciting protein uh, uh, folded video related to Google's DeepMind protein folding algorithm Alpha 2. And I'm trademarking Alpha Fold it already just in case. But going back to COVID, um, one interesting aspect that we learned once we started posting uh, COVID puzzles was the desire for people during the quarantine to be able to contribute in some way to the fight against COVID-19. Once we started advertising these coronavirus puzzles, we saw the second highest spike in the 13 years uh, of folded of, of new players. Whereas the previous spike had been um, when we were trying to solve the structure of a known but unsolved protein, this was our biggest spike uh, since we had started tackling protein design uh, in folded, and biggest spike by, by a lot. So not all the players stuck around because designing spike binders is not an easy task, no matter how much uh, you gamify it. Uh, but there are many that did stay and have become expert folded players. Um, but even those who weren't able to contribute to the difficult COVID puzzles, um, they're still able to learn about coronaviruses by asking questions in our in-game chat, as well as our folded office hours, where we, we scientists uh, answer questions uh, over Discord. And I just want to end by pointing out that Foldit is not the only one doing this. There are other citizen science games out there, such as this one from the WHO, uh, also fighting COVID, uh, as well as our colleagues at Eterna, which is the RNA folding the game. We 
ended up recruiting um, thousands of people on the internet um, through a video game that we call Eterna to um, help us design, redesign RNA vaccines um, uh, and to test them experimentally. And that's resulted in the discovery of principles for designing vaccines that I think, again, would have taken us several years and, and was accelerated by almost 10x because of this internet scale crowdsourcing video game platform called Eterna. So Eterna is awesome. And we're going to try to collaborate with them to maybe get uh, RNA proteins into Foldit so our players can help with mRNA vaccines as well. This is a huge collaboration. So I got to acknowledge everybody, but most importantly, uh, the Foldit players uh, without which none of this would be possible. Thank you.